September 1939, but for over two years they had seen virtually no combat. They were bored and restless. Both General Montgomery and Canadian Prime Minister Mackenzie King wanted the Canadian troops to see action. The Dieppe raid appeared to be a good opportunity to test their training. The 2nd Canadian Division had spent several tedious months on garrison duty in Iceland before arriving in Britain in the summer of 1940. It had since been defending southern England against a possible German invasion. Though highly trained, by 1942 the troops became frustrated. Like other Canadian formations, they knew that troops such as the Australians, Indians and South Africans had been fighting in North Africa since 1940. Canadians wanted their chance. Major General John Roberts, a World War I artilleryman, commanded the 2nd Canadian Division. He selected six infantry battalions for the Dieppe Raid. The Royal Regiment of Canada. The Royal Hamilton Light Infantry. The Essex Scottish. The South Saskatchewan Regiment the Queen's own Cameron Highlanders of Canada, and a French-Canadian unit, the Fusiliers Mont Royal. General Roberts put his troops through intensive training in street fighting to prepare them for combat in Dieppe itself. He also had an armored unit to provide close fire support on the beaches. This was the 14th Canadian Tank Battalion, equipped with a British Churchill tank. Armed with a 57mm gun and manned by a crew of five, the Churchill was designed to be an infantry support tank. But the standard tank was unsuited for amphibious operations. Hasty modifications had to be made so that it could reach shore from a landing craft. But getting onto the beach was just one of its challenges. The Churchills then had to make their way across the gravel on the beaches themselves. Finally, they had to go over the seawall to get into the town of Dieppe. The Canadians conducted major landing rehearsals in June. The first was a disaster. But the second showed improvement. Encouraged, General Montgomery decided that the raid on Dieppe would be mounted on July 4th. But bad weather forced postponements. The Canadians became frustrated once again. Worse, there was a growing security problem. Although the Canadian troops had not yet received detailed orders, most had a good idea that their target was the port of Dieppe. There was a very real danger that they might divulge details of the operation while off duty. The concentration of landing craft in southern English ports could not be disguised from German air reconnaissance. This was reinforced when German FW-190 fighter bombers flying over the Isle of Wight swept down and fired on the assembled landing craft. It seemed certain that the Germans knew about the planned attack. The repeated postponement of Operation Rutter convinced many, including General Bernard Montgomery, that it had been compromised 
and that the raid on Dieppe should be cancelled. But Montgomery was then sent away from Britain to command the 8th Army in North Africa. Admiral Lord Louis Mountbatten, whose headquarters had planned the raid, insisted that the attack on Dieppe proceed. It would have a new code name, Jubilee. Montbatten later said the British Chiefs of Staff gave verbal consent to proceed with the mission. It was not committed to paper to preserve secrecy. But a number of significant changes were made to the original plan. These included cancellation of the preliminary bombing attack on Dieppe for fear of unnecessary civilian casualties. The RAF also declared that because of the weather, it could not be sure of landing paratroopers close enough to neutralize the two key German coastal batteries. The airborne element of Operation Jubilee was therefore canceled, but preventing the German batteries from firing on Allied amphibious forces at sea was still considered essential to the raid's success. British Army commandos were therefore selected for this mission. Men of the newly formed U.S. Rangers, the American equivalent of the commandos, were also training in Britain at this time. It was therefore decided that 50 Rangers should join their British counterparts in the assault. This would make them the first U.S. soldiers to see ground combat in the European theater. The commandos and rangers would be landed from the sea. They would then have to climb cliffs before attacking the batteries. Once they neutralized the German guns, the main landings would take place according to the original plan. After hitting the beaches, the Canadians would move inland and attack gun batteries and a nearby airfield before withdrawing. The appointed day of the assault, August 18th, 1942. As the fateful day approached, the Germans continued to fly photographic reconnaissance missions over England's southern coast. The photographs these sorties brought back made them even more certain that the British were about to mount an attack. German troops around Dieppe and all along the Atlantic Wall were put on high alert and conducted anti-invasion rehearsals. They also carried out live firing exercises on the beaches of Dieppe. In England, the troops of the 2nd Canadian Division and the commandos made their final preparations for the raid. But on August 17th, just as they were preparing to sail, bad weather forced a 24-hour postponement. In the meantime, the RAF prepared its planes, determined to score a decisive victory over the Luftwaffe. 56 fighter squadrons would take part in the raid, including some from the United States 8th Air Force. On August 18th, Operation Jubilee was activated. Minesweepers began to clear a passage through the English Channel. That night, over 6,000 men, nearly 5,000 of them Canadians, set sail in nine landing ships. Several of the ships were channel ferries that once sailed the route from English ports to Dieppe. Shortly before 4 o'clock in the morning, the Allied naval force ran into a German coastal convoy. Both sides opened fire. The main attack force was unaffected by this clash. But the number three commando unit, which was responsible for neutral...